Hello everyone. Welcome back to our YouTube channel Science Class Live. In the previous episodes, first and second, we discussed about atoms, elements, molecules, compounds. After that, we discussed about atomic mass you need, relative atomic mass, relative molecular mass, and how to find the relative molecular masses of certain molecules and compounds. This is the third episode. In this episode, I am going to discuss you another important concepts in chemistry that is the mol Avogadro's concept as well as the molar masses. Today, I am going to explain you what is the relationship between Avogadro's concept and mol. Do you know that? How can we explain the term mol? Before explaining that, one you think about in day to day life, how can explain a certain quantity easily? For example, think about as mentioned in this diagram, if there are 12 eggs, how can I explain that? So, to, to explain the quantity 12 entities, we use the term dozens. And think about the second example as shown in this diagram, there are 144 pencils. We call it as what? Gross of pencils. And also, uh, next example, when you think about a bundle of sheets, bundle of papers, if there are 500 sheets in this bundle, we call it as what? A reap of papers. This is how we explain the quantity of certain entities using a single term, dozens, gross, and also reap. In chemistry, we use the term mole to represent the quantity of certain sample of entities. Here, let's take one example as shown in this diagram. There is carbon, a certain quantity of carbon. The next diagram shows a certain quantity of sulfur atoms. How can we represent that quantity using a single term in chemistry? That word is mole. You know that 1 mole is equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 entities in a sample. Right, let's move to the next example. You know that the great scientist Amidio Avogadro introduced that concept as uh, Avogadro's constant. One Avogadro, Avogadro's constant means the particular constant value it is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. Now let's move to these three examples here. First one contains certain uh, atoms of copper. So uh, the quantity we can explain using the atoms, if not molecules, as mentioned in that. Uh, next one, uh, compounds, for example, sodium chloride compounds, right. So the quantity mole can be expressed using these three ways. Let's move to one example, as mentioned in this diagram, carbon. So, one mole of carbon contains 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 entities. Uh, let's move to the second example as mentioned in the diagram, carbon dioxide. You know that carbon dioxide, one mole of carbon dioxide contains 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 entities of carbon dioxide molecules. Right. And let's move to another example. Sodium chloride, you know that sodium chloride is an ionic compound. The sodium chloride ionic compounds consist of one mole of sodium chloride consists of 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 number of sodium chloride molecules. Right. So this is how we explain the relationship with the mole and Avogadro's constant. You know that a uh, one mole can be expressed using the grams also. You know that any substance, any matter, any atoms, when you take any element or any molecule, when you take in grams equal to its relative atomic mass or equal to its relative molecular mass in grams, that contains one mole. One mole of carbon contains 12 grams because the relative atomic mass of carbon is 12. Similarly, when you think about the tin, stannous, the one mole of tin or one mole of stannous contains 
118.7 grams. In other words, we can say 118 grams of stannous contain one mole. There should be 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 entities or atoms. Right. Let's move to the next example. If you want, we can express the the term mole in relation to the volume. So how can I explain that? So when you think about uh, one mole of gas in standard temperature at standard pressure that contains 22.4 liters. That is how we explain the quantity mole in relation with the volume. In other words, we can say, as mentioned in this example, if we take one mole of carbon, we can express that in three ways. What are they? Do you know that? If you want, we can say that one mole of carbon consists of 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 atoms. In other words, we can say that one mole of carbon consists of 12 grams of carbon. In other words, we can say that one mole of carbon occupies 22.4 liters of carbon in a standard pressure and temperature. Right. Let's have a summary. You know that what is called as Avogadro's constant. Remember, Amidu Avogadro says that 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 entities equal to Avogadro's constant, and that is equal to one mole. Right. And you can understand the relationship between the mole and Avogadro's constant clearly. I hope that. Next, I'm going to explain you about the concept molar mass. So what is called as molar mass? The molar mass means the mass of one mole of any element or a compound. So you know that earlier we learned about relative atomic masses, relative molecular masses. They don't have units. But keep in mind, the molar mass have units. What's the unit? Molar mass is represented by this formula. What's the formula? Molar mass equal the mass of a substance divided by one mole. As you know that the mass of a substance is measured by grams in chemistry and also the, the mole is measured by moles. As a result, the unit of molar mass will be grams per mole. Right. I hope that you learn all the concepts related to the Avogadro's constant, mole, and also molar mass. This is the end of our unit, quantification of elements and compounds. I invite you, please subscribe our YouTube channel, Science Plus Live. Last but not least, I am saying you, please brighten your life with the power of science.